Hi there, Sharks. I'm Jonathan Little here with Justin Saliba, just GTO. We're going to be going through a hand we played in a $10,000 buy-in Poker Masters tournament against each other. We decided to battle it out. We'll see who the winner was. Justin raises the hijack seat into my big blind. Must have the nuts. Must have the nuts. He has Jack Eight of Clubs. Standard open in the hijack seat. Maybe like a hair loose, but I would raise his hand basically every time. So far, I'm not offended. Fine. <laughs> I have King, Queen of Clubs in the big blind. Also, 90 big blinds deep early in this tournament. You can three bet. You can call. Our GTO charts say call. There you go. Justin says three bet. Eh, you know, do whatever you want. <laughs> I just call because um, I know just GTO is going to find a lot of four bet bluffs, and I don't really want that. <laughs> <laughs> Flop comes. 10, 10, 3. One club, one spade, one diamond. Justin has backdoor flush draw with an overcard. I have backdoor flush draw with two overcards. I check, and Justin bets tiny, one big blind. What is the deal with a one big blind continuation <laughs> to bet? I want to bet as small. If they let me bet half a big blind, I'd bet a half a big blind. <laughs> so, so what is the purpose of betting small on these paired boards? So I have a massive range advantage. Meaning your whole range is favored against my range yeah. because you have... Aces, Kings, Queens, Jacks. Yeah. Even Ace Pairs. King. Ace, I King. Ace King. Yeah. Right? I mean, Ace King is a really strong hand on this board. You have plenty of tens. Yeah, plenty of tens. But you have more nuts. So when you have more nuts and I have a stronger range, I want to bet as tiny as possible. So if they let me bet half big blind, I'm telling you, I'd bet a half big blind in this spot. Uh, just want to push my equity advantage, put a lot of your range in a really rough spot. Um, and then, yeah, I, I don't want to start piling money here. Because then, then you can just, like, fold out your stuff and polarize your range around my condensed good equity. Interestingly enough, if you would bet half a big blind, why bet anything? Because I want to push that equity. <laughs> it's an interesting thing to think about, though, right? Like, if... if Could just check range. As the bet gets smaller and smaller... It's closer to a check. It's closer to a check, right? You just open the action. You don't want to reopen the action, necessarily. I do, though. I want to push yeah. my equity. All right. <laughs> Whenever you are in these scenarios where you, ha you don't have the nut advantage, but you have a big range advantage with the vast majority of your, like, the vast majority of your hands are happy enough putting in a little bit, you just want to bet one big blind. Yeah. So, facing a one big blind bet in this scenario, what should I do with my tens and my draws? And draws on tens and three are usually backdoor flush draws, hands that wrap, or cards that wrap around the ten, like jack nine, queen nine, stuff like that. Yeah. Should we be raising these hands? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Because when I have a 10, I want to get my money in the pot, right? Yeah. And even uglier hands, you know, like, you give yourself one over card and a backdoor flush draw, backdoor anything. You know, like, jack four of clubs. That's a great hand just to check raise in the spot, you know? You're getting, your, your jack highs benefit a lot more because it makes me fold queen highs and king highs. Whereas, like, a hand like king queen is going to mix. It can raise sometimes. It can call sometimes because it keeps in my worst kings and queens. Um... And doesn't get many worse hands to fold, but it still has good properties to, to check raise to. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people in this scenario make the error of just folding unless they have a pair or ace high. But right here, if you had queen jack offsuit, I don't think you can fold on 10 10 3, right? Yeah. And a lot of people feel very uncomfortable continuing with a hand like queen high. I mean, you're maybe, like, if you had to pick between call or fold with even a hand like, I don't know, 8 7 of clubs, it's probably better to call. Right? Or raise. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, if you couldn't raise. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah I like, mean, if, if you're folding everything worse than ace high in a 10K here, you're going to get run over the entire day. You are. <laughs> it, it's a scenario where you must continue because you're getting amazing pot odds, right? Mm -hmm. And yes, you're dead sometimes, but quite often you're not. Sometimes you get to find some bluffs. But it's important that you actually do find some bluffs later, right? Because a lot of people just never bluff. And if you never bluff, you make it really easy for the in-position player. But we can't make it easy on Justin. We're going to put in the check raise. We go up to 5,000. And one thing to know about the paired boards, too, is, like, at deep stacks, you get calls. But at, like, 30 bigs, what would you do with your entire range? Continuing range. Race. You're just going to check race. Anyway, <laughs> right? Because, as, like, yeah. As you get shallower and shallower, you should be raising even more often. Exactly. With the vast majority of your range. Yeah. We discussed this, I think, in one of my books, Excelling at Tough No Limit Hold'em Games. There was a chapter on, I think, spots very much like this, where as you get shallower, you check raise the vast majority of your range or fold. Right? Nice. You don't do all that much calling. Even an old dog can learn new tricks, huh? All right. We check raise. Justin's sitting here with the jack eight of clubs on the 10, 10, 3. Facing a small check raise. If I check raise giant, you can just fold. Yeah. But we went small. It's going to be the end of me. <laughs> so 
you're clearly not folding because you have backdoor draws and a jack, right? Yeah. That's pretty clear to me. If it's not clear to you, you're probably playing too tightly. That said, if your opponents only check raise the flop with 10s, then obviously fold, right? Yeah. But you're not playing against a weak, tight, straightforward player. Maybe I'm not the most insane ever, but like, you know, I'm going to find some bluffs, as, as we see here. And, and I get to play a spot in yeah. position with mm -hmm. deep stacks, with, you know, now I don't have their equity advantage, but with the, a lot of strong hands, it's like, you can never fold backdoor stuff in this spot. Mm -hmm. If you're folding backdoor draws versus small check raise in positions with massive SPRs, you're just going to be overfolding. So you're yeah, you got to peel. Drastically overfolding. And if you yeah. find in your games that your opponents respect your raises too much, and they fold your small raises, you should just be check raising everything, right? Yeah. Um, you can print a lot of money against weak opponents just by putting in lots of little bits of post flop aggression, check raising, you know, etc. And they're probably going to overfold. All right, you decide to call. Mildly offended. <laughs> Turn is an ace. Ugh. This is not a good card for me because I probably don't check raise all that many aces, right? Like if you think about the calling range I'm going to have, it's going to be a lot of ace highs, right? So when I check raise, I either have a 10 or some junky draw. And the only, I mean, backdoor diamonds are there, so maybe I do have some diamond draws, but I also have a lot of stuff like this. And if you think about Justin's range, he's going to have some 10s, he's going to have some pairs, which are still fine enough, and a whole lot of ace highs. So this is just, like, awful for me, right? Yeah. Disaster. You probably get to, like, pot here some. Like, do some, like, really big betting and then mostly checking. Which draw... Would, would I be happier betting with diamonds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you check raise the flop in these spots, your turn barrel range is, like, very equity-driven. So you're going to have some of your 10x that want to bet huge, and then your bluffs need to have, uh, need to have equity. Like, mm -hmm. if you raise the jack-4 in this spot, and let's just say you're raising all your jack-4 backdoor flush draws, you have clubs, spades, and diamonds. The one that you barrel is just going to be your diamonds, and you're just going to check forward the rest. Um, so yeah, when you bet this spot, you you need to have the diamonds. You need to have equity. You have to have five four. Um, yeah, thing, things that can make the nuts. Because when you pot and I call, if you have check four, you're just dead. <laughs> you know, right? Like you're dead. So you need to be able to improve. You don't want to be dead. Yeah. Okay. So with king queen, well, I guess another question is: Would I rather be betting the Turn with Queen Jack or King Queen? For sure, Queen Jack. Queen Jack, because it lacks showdown value yeah. to some extent, right? Particularly with a diamond to block my continues. Like if you have Queen Jack O with a diamond in your mm -hmm. hand, it's going to be way better than having King Queen of Clubs. Okay. So we're checking. And if it checks down somehow, I'm, maybe I win some portion of the time, right? Sure, yeah. Whereas with Queen Jack or with 5 4, you definitely don't, right? Well, 5 4, you definitely don't, right? So I check. If you make a big bet, I'm just going to fold. But then, with your jack high, you slight me and bet 4,000. Why bet 4,000 with your jack high? Um, I get you to fold a lot of hands like queen high and, and like, kind of air stuff that I want to make fold. Like queen four of clubs, right? Like queen four of clubs is obviously super nice to make fold right away. I have a lot of aces. Like you said, the ace is really good for me, not good for you. And it's another spot, kind of like the flop, where when you check, I just want to push equity. You still probably have more tens than I do in this spot, but I have so much more top pair that I just want to push equity with small bets. Um, and I need bluffs, so... Gotta find some bluffs. Gotta find some bluffs. Do you think a hand like Queen Jack would be a better bluff than Jack 8? Or are you just only betting small here? Right? Like, if, if you have a big bet size and a small bet size on the turn, then... I'm guessing... You gotta figure out how to split bets. it up, right? You probably yeah. don't have big bets here, right? Because you have a lot of ASX. Yeah, maybe I have maybe I have a little bit of big bets, but I'm guessing my most common size is going to be like a bet 25. Um, even this is like a little small, I would have rather to see 5K, but it doesn't matter that much. Um, a lot of people get scared here with, when they have an ace. They think, well, I really don't want to get check raised. I just want to see a cheap showdown. But you probably should bet the ace, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have ace. Once again, like, I have the good aces and you don't. Like, if you raise an ace, it's going to be like ace four, right? And so I have ace king, ace queen, ace jack. Mm -hmm. You have ace four, ace two. So I want to put money in the pot. You know? Well, I mean, the fear is I just have a 10 and I'm going to check raise you. Yeah, of but, course. But imagine you'd bet your ace king and I check raise. It's miserably bad because now you're playing a big pot with a hand that is either ahead or dead. If you check raise me twice in Jam River, I think I'm going to be happy putting ace king into the muck. <laughs> and good luck finding a ton of bluffs in that spot. That's hard. So, when you're playing against good GTO opponents on the turn, on the flop, check raise them. When they get a good card for them, check raise them again. <laughs> and then, and then over jam the river. <laughs> And they're going to fold. 
Unless they decide, eh, whatever, Ace King's too good, I call. I'm gonna have a 10, though. You know what I mean? Like, some, some frequency. That's the problem, is that yeah. sometimes he just has a 10, and you're bluffing into the, the effective nuts. Yeah. Okay, so we have King, Queen, out of position, on 10, 10, 3, Ace. No backdoor flush draw anymore for me. What do we do in this scenario? Do we fold, call, or go for a bluff? Take a second to think about it, pause the video, and write what you would do in the comment section below. Oh boy. Pot odds, right? Pot odds exist. And I beat all the draws, funny enough. So given I beat all the draws, beat all the draws. The problem with beating all the draws is that while I'm ahead at the moment, you're often going to bluff me on the river, right? So I'm not sure I actually get to the showdown with the draws, with, with the king-queen all that often, when it is the best hand, because if you have a bluff, you're just going to bluff me a lot. And when you have a better hand, you're going to bet, right? And make me fold. Or whatever. It's, it's a tough spot to actually but get I to the showdown. I still have some give ups on the river though like imagine like, I, like imagine i bet um king jack of diamonds on the turn mm -hmm. i'm sitting uh, sitting there on like a i don't know five river it's pretty hard for me to want to put money in the pot with king jack of diamonds like when you check yeah. call it's like you have a lot of aces like like your range is like pretty protecting this spot so i i actually think that i have to give up on the river maybe i'm over bluffing maybe i'll just over bluff the river and it's gonna be hard but I think in general, I'm going to have enough combos of hands that have to give up on the river that have bad properties um, that you're going to get to show down enough. So like, I, I think this is probably the best, like, th this is a really good call. I mean, I think a lot of people would just muck right away, and I, I would just be torching them on the turn. <laughs> and so, and no, I mean, Instead, you'll torch me on the river. Well, uh, <laughs> only, on this, only on this run out. See, the thing is, is that if, you, if Justin does drastically overbluff, he's just going to be losing tons of money to my aces, right? And the slow play tens. Yeah. So even though he'll get me to fold out this king-queen, and like I lose on this transaction, I would win on yeah. future transactions where we have. And think about the ace. your check calls. Like you still have boats. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just have ace ten. You don't want to put in more money with ace ten. You want me to just bluff it off and stuff. So your range is really protected. I can't just kind of go crazy on this river. And also, queen and king aren't that bad for you. You know, imagine a queen comes and I check back queen jack. You win. I check back queen nine. You win. Um, I take it back. We chop. But uh, if but I if I get a, if I get a jack, I win. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. So. It's not like we're dead here. I think a lot of people look at this hand and think, King high, we're dead. Let's move on. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, I like this call. We're not I dead. think this is good. I think you have to continue in this yeah. spot. And also, pot odds, right? People forget we're putting in four to try to get back 28. Pretty good. I need to win, what, one-seventh? <laughs> good luck. How am I... Yeah, I mean, I'm going to get... I'm going to realize one-seventh of this pot. It's really... Am I going to realize a seventh of this pot? It's like, yes, I am. Yeah. Rivers are a 10. Fun card. Should I ever bluff you? You can't lead. I don't no, think. cannot lead because you I have, more have a, a lot of aces yeah. and some tens, right? So can't lead. I check, and now you decide to steal the money, and you bet fifteen thousand, about half pot. Yeah, I tanked forever for this spot. I don't know if you remember, but I don't remember this hand at all. It's a tricky spot. <laughs> yeah, a tricky spot when the ten comes on the river because like I have two sizes because I have two really clear portions to my range. I have the ace which is a boat, and I have quads, right? And so my quads obviously want to go bigger than half pot, but my ace doesn't want to go very big. Like, what is an ace getting called by its worst, right? So it's like I need to have kind of like a smaller size to, to, fit in my, to fit in my boats with the ace. So it took me a while to come with the half pot size, and I, I actually, like, I was going to try to make you fold a three. That's kind of like what I was targeting in the spot. Um, because, like, what, what do you do with a three in the spot? It's a pretty miserable spot facing a half pot bat on the river. It is. It is a tough spot. I know what I would have done. <laughs> I would have found a call. Yeah. But um, but then I have jacks. Then you, you have jacks. really bad yeah. about it. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing is you kind of get to go for slightly thinnish value in this spot because you have a whole lot of aces, right? And yeah, yeah. I just can't do a lot about it. To be fair, should I ever put in the check raise bluff here to try to get you off of an ace? Yeah. Especially with my king queen. This, this is going to be, if you think about what my offsuit tens that I'm opening, it's king ten, queen ten. Our, ace, our, ace 10, which is blocked. Yeah. Because yeah. the ace is on the board. And then King 10 0, Queen 10 0. So, like, if you would jam this spot, I mean, what am I going to do with Ace King? <laughs> it's going to be a. I mean, you, if you jam in this spot, almost everybody playing that Poker Masters is going to just muck their ace really quickly. So, like, I think this is the combo to do it because you're blocking my most common combos of quads. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think this is the combo to do it. So, what do we do? Not all the time. Not all the time. We ripped it all in. <laughs> and Justin folded this. Jack. The jack high. No, actually, I just folded. Which and is, Which is good. It's still good. My fear, call it fear, is that if I check call the turn, I end up check folding the river too often. Is that, like, a problem? Like, imagine you do have a hand like King Queen that you're supposed to bluff, I don't know, 5% of the time, 10% of the time, whatever it is. Maybe it's more. I don't know. Run it in the solver. Let me know in the comment section. Um, maybe the call on the turn's not quite as good, but even then, like you said, I'm pretty well protected here yeah. to the point that it's probably fine. Yeah. I and just, you're going to win when I check back. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, like if I had jacketed diamonds, it would definitely be an over bluff for me to, to bet river. So why would you bluff the clubs but not the diamonds? Uh, I want to unblock your auto diamond folds. So you want me to have busted diamonds like king high diamonds, exactly. queen high diamonds that will then fold to a river bat. Exactly. But if you have the diamonds, now I can't have king jack of diamonds Correct. that folds to a river bat, which makes me more likely to have a mate hand. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So in this scenario, what a lot of people do wrong is they just bet the turn with all their flush draws, the diamonds, and then they bet all of those on the river too. But those are really like kind of the worst draw busted draws to be bluffing because you want me to have those and if you have them i don't have them this often so. cool hand you all played me you win the pot i lost we both probably played it pretty well that's all right yeah it worked out great for you <laughs> that's gonna be it for today if you enjoyed this video let me know in the comment section below also click the like and subscribe button click the notification bell if you play against justin just call <laughs> goodbye bye